The Olympic ceremonies are in the books, but even before that, we already had one round of Olympic soccer that was completed earlier on in the week with match day one of Olympic soccer for men's and women's. And on the women's side, we had a ton of overs cashing on match day one. The over 2.5 went five and one. There was one under, that was a one nothing Brazil win over Nigeria. We did pick that game to go under in a pretty successful match day one slate of predictions. Now those scores for match day one saw Spain winning two to one over Japan, Canada two to one over New Zealand, Brazil one nothing over Nigeria, Germany three nothing over Australia, France 3-2 over Colombia, USA 3-0 over Zambia. Now let's move on into Sunday's Women's Olympic Soccer Match Day 2 predictions. And if you find this video helpful, please sure to, yeah, be sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel to get more Olympic picks throughout the tournament. Let's get into the six games here, starting with New Zealand and Colombia. This one's at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. For New Zealand, the fir football fern scored early versus Canada, and they held on as Canada grew into the game and tied it in the first half stoppage time. But Canada's second goal late in the 79th minute proved to be the winner in a 2-1 defeat for New Zealand. Canada dominated possession, 61%. They outshot New Zealand 22-7 and 9-2 in shots on target. The Ferns ran out with six straight wins from February until April this year before a nil-nil draw against Th Thailand, a 2-0 loss to Japan, a 4-1 loss to Japan, and then a 1-1 draw to Zambia in their most recent games heading into the tournament. Now for Colombia, Colombia's Olympic start started pretty poorly. They fell behind 3-0 to France despite creating their share of chances. They did claw back with two second half goals only to see Mayor Ramirez get red carded in the 86th minute and that saw the comeback fall short and they lost 3-2. Overall, uh, Fran Ramirez though will be a big loss on match day two after taking that red card. She had four shots, one shot on, shot on target and created many chances in that game. Overall, France had 61% possession, but Colombia had more attempts, 16 to nine, but then France had more shots on target, seven to four. Los Chicas Superpoderosas lost two to one to Ecuador in their last game before the tournament, but won three nothing, two nothing, three nothing, and one nothing in the games prior. Those games came against Venezuela twice, Guatemala, and Mexico in those wins. Colombia is 7-0-4, but other losses in that time have come against USA, 3-0, Brazil, 1-0 in that time as well. So of those four recent losses, three have come against some of the top teams in the world. Head-to-head, -head, these teams have played twice recently in friendlies last year with a nil-nil draw and a 1-0 Colombia win. They also met in the 2016 Olympics, 1-0 to New Zealand, and another friendly way back in 2012. That was 2-1 to New Zealand as well. Colombia is a dark horse in this tournament. They are down there, one of the lower ranked nations in the odds, but New Zealand is one of the big long shots in this tournament. Colombia did give France a real challenge. They had chances earlier in that game. Once they got on the score sheet, they certainly had a chance to draw level in that match day one defeat. They have much more talent than New Zealand here. They need to get that win after losing on match day one and knowing they'll have a tough game coming up in the next round as well. Let's pick Colombia to win there. They were at minus 200 at bet 365. I've seen that come down a little bit to minus 188. If you wanted to throw that into a parlay, it's certainly an option or perhaps go Colombia. That would be minus 188 or Colombia to win and score over 1.5 would come in at minus 105. Next up, we have Brazil and Japan. It's 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern time as well. Brazil thought they had taken the lead versus Nigeria, but Marta's goal was called back for offside in the lead-up. They still scored anyways. Minutes later, with an amazing strike from Gabi Nunez, this time assisted by Marta. The possession was nearly split. Brazil led in attempts 16 to 13, and each had five shots on target. Escarinhas have won four in a row: one nothing, four nothing, four nothing, and one one, winning on PKs versus Japan in the She Believes Cup. So there's a quick turnaround in this rematch as. Brazil and Japan just recently played this year. Now the two four nothing wins in that time that I just mentioned were wins over Jamaica. Overall, Brazil are 10-0 and 2-12. and They've scored in all but one of those, that being a one nothing loss to USA. Japan, they scored early off of a free kick against Spain, but then they saw La Roja equalize through a Ballon d'Or winner, Etienne Bonmani, late into that first half and going into the half tied 1-1. Spain continued to dominate in the second half and Maria Caldenti scored in the 74th minute. That was the winner. Spain got the 2-1 win. Much like in last summer's World Cup match, Japan had little possession against Spain, just 25%. This time they could only manage one goal on their three shots on target and their four shot attempts. Japan is 5-1-4 and four in the last 10. They had won 10 straight before that time. Only one time in their last 26 games have they not found the back of the net. The over 2.5 has gone 5-2 and two in the last seven games for Japan. Head-to-head, -head, these teams have just met in the She Believes Cup, like I mentioned earlier, back in April, where they drew 1-1 in Brazil, winning in PKs. They played three times last year, twice in friendlies, one 4-3 by Brazil and 2-0 by Japan. And then again in the She Believes Cup, won 1-0 by Brazil. I think this one could be another tight game here. 
This could be uh, an option to go under 2.5 at minus 118, or for a bigger price, perhaps the draw at plus 220 could also be an option. Japan will need to get a, get a win here. Brazil already has a win, so a draw isn't the worst thing for them. I think these two teams can play a tight game here. Let's go plus 220 for the draw between Brazil and Japan. Next up, it's Spain and Nigeria. 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern time on Sunday. Japan scored early off the free kick before Spain tied with a Tana Bamani right before the half. And then in the second half, Mariona Caldante scored in the 74th minute, get that winning goal for Spain, 2-1, to one, and give Spain their first Olympic win. Spain had 75% possession, and they outshot Japan 14-4, to four, and shots on target were 7-3. to three. In 2024, Spain is 8-0-1, outscoring opponents 25-5 to five in all competitions. If you go back further, they've lost just four times in 36 games, being 31-1-4. and four. And In their last 12 games, they've scored multiple goals in 11 of them. And they've won by multiple goals in 8 of 12. For Nigeria, they met Brazil match day one. While each team had their chances, they each had five shots on target. It was Gabi Nunez's first half strike that proved to be the only difference in the game in a 1-0 Brazil win. The possession was split in that game. Brazil led in the attempt 16-13. to Each team had five shots on target. Nigeria got knocked out of the round of 16 in the World Cup last year in penalties to England after drawing 0-0. Now that and the Brazil loss they just suffered are the only defeats in any competition in their last 16 games going all the way back to February 2023. So they certainly do hang around in most games, uh, usually, whether it's a win or often sometimes a draw. Nigeria games are often tight. The under has gone to, under 2.5 has gone 5-0 and and 9 of 4, 9 of 4 of late. And we have some conflicting scoring stats here if we're trying to decide if it'll be a low scoring game or a high scoring game. On one hand, Nigeria has not allowed more than one goal in any of their past 11 games. And they've only given up more than one goal once in their last 18 games. But then, as we talked about, Spain has multiple goals scored in 11 of their past 12. Nigeria just played a somewhat open game against Brazil, where both teams got five shots on target. And with Brazil having the edge in attempt 16-13, Nigeria tries to play that way against Spain. This game could get ugly. Spain should win this game. They are huge favorites at minus 700. But they don't necessarily have a reason to necessarily go all out and just pile up the score uh, as they already have that win here. And knowing that first, second, and Many third place teams, two third place teams are also going through. They don't need a massive win here. Head to head, this will be the first ever meeting. I'm going to pick Spain to win and then take your pick of if you just want to play it safe, under five goals in the game, minus 163, or under four goals, plus 120. Take your pick there of how you want to go. Next up, Australia and Zambia. It's one o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Australia, the Matildas were without Sam Kerr, and they maybe looked the, the worst team of match day one. They were outshot 17 to 8 and 4 to 2 in shots on target. And three of the four German shots on target found the back of the net. One of the first half and two quick to start the second half in what ended 3-0 for Germany. Germany held the edge in chances, 17-8 and 4-2 in attempts and shots on target. Australia is now 4-1-2, but those two big wins came over Uzbekistan. So that makes it kind of tough to judge how great, how good they've been in some of those recent games. For Zambia, it was always going to be tough for Zambia starting the Olympics off against USA, and they found themselves in a quick, deep hole, down 3 nothing, just 25 minutes into the game. A Paulina Zulu red card in the 34th minute didn't help matters, though. Zambia did manage to keep the score the same the rest of the way, and did go on to lose 3 to nothing. Obviously, the stats were all in, in USA's favor. Possession, 79% shots. 27-8, shots on target, 8-3. Since losing 5 0 to Spain in the World Cup, the Copper Queens are 10 3 3. They're 4 2 2 in their past eight, but they have just one win, 1 2 2 in their past five, and that one win did need extra time, so it's zero wins in regulation in their last five. Their last game entered the Olympics was 1 1 with New Zealand. That's another lower ranked nation in this tournament. Australia, better than New Zealand, but a step down from USA. Zambia is usually good for a goal. They've scored in 13 of 16 in regulation if you go all the way back to that Spain loss from last year. Even after Zambia went down a player that didn't concede any more goals to USA, and Barbara Banda still had some chances. She leads the NWSL with 12 goals. It's always goal dangerous and a possibility as a scoring prop. This will be the first ever nation uh, meeting between these nations. Now, Zambia comes into this game, though, as a huge, huge underdog at plus 1,200 or maybe even plus 1,400, depending where you're looking. And simply betting them at that price, simply betting them to get on the score sheet, actually offers a decent bet just to score at least one goal. That would be over 0.5. If we go Zambia just to score a goal over 0.5, that would come in at minus 120. Let's go that route here. Next up, USA and Germany, huge clash, match day two at three o'clock p.m. on Sunday. 
USA, it was all USA versus Zambia, like we just touched on. They ran out to a 3-0 lead at the half, two goals from Mallory Swanson. Zambia did themselves no favors, taking a red card half hour into the game, but USA could not score again. They did have 79% possession, shots 27-8, shots on target 8-3. to The U.S. were without Jaden Shaw to start the game. They also saw Sophia Smith exit the game, injured 42 minutes in, two players to monitor before this one. Trinity Rodman piled up the shot attempts. She had the most on the team with seven, putting two on target, including one for a goal. In USA's last 24 games in all competitions, they're 22-2, and two, and only three times have they not scored. And they'll be up against another team that likes to score. It's Germany. Germany struck early against the Sam Curlis Matildas on match day one through Marina Hegering in the 24th minute. It stayed that way until halftime, but the German onslaught started in the second half with two more quick goals as they went on to win 3 to nothing. Germany got goals from Hegering, Leah Schuler, and Julie Brand, and outshot Australia 17 to 8 and 4 to 2. Brand and Clara Buhl piled up the shot attempts with 6 and 5, respectively. So if you were looking for any player props, they certainly had plenty of shot attempts in that game. Germany's now won 8 of 9, outscoring opponents 22 to 8 in that time. They've conceded, though, in 5 of 7, so both teams' of score bets have been cashing in their games. And they've given up goals to the likes of nations like Iceland. They gave up 3-2, Poland 1, Poland 1 again, Iceland 1, and Austria 2 in recent games coming into this tournament. If you go further back, they're 11-1-3 and three in 13 games. One of those losses with 2-1 to one to France. Germany may have shut out Australia without their best player. But I think that could be a different story here against USA. Certainly, I see potential for goals in this matchup. The most recent meetings between these teams were two 2022 friendlies, both of them were won by two to one score lines. Further back, USA, nine, three, and one. That's just one loss against Germany in 13 meetings going all the way back to 2009. Let's bet on goals from this game. At least a goal from both. We'll go both teams to score, minus 138. And the final game, the sixth game on Sunday, going at the same time as that USA-Germany game is France and Canada, also at three o'clock. France opened the scoring early versus Colombia with Kototo scoring five minutes in. Kototo doubled the lead for France in the 18th minute mark. Columbia hit the post soon after, trying to cut that score to, back to 2-1, to one, but they were not able to. France went on to get the third goal and make it 3-0. And Colombia still got their chances, though. They didn't give up. They had multiple chances from Ramirez. She got taken down in the box in the second half. Uzme stepped up, converted the PK, cut the lead to 3-1, to one, spurred Las Chicas Super Poderosas on, and substitute Manuel Pavi scored a second goal for Colombia in the 64th minute. But that comeback... Uh, fell short. France would go on to get the win. Ramirez saw a red card late in the game, and France gets the 3-2 to two win. Overall, France had 61% possession. Colombia did out-attempt them, though, in shots, 16-9, to nine, while France did have more shots on target, 7-4. to four. Since losing a PKs to Australia in last summer's World Cup, France is 11-1-3, but two of those three losses have come in two of their four most recent games. Those coming in Euro qualifying. Bets on both teams score over 2.5. have gone 5-0 in France games. And they've only failed to score three times in 19 games. It seems hard to see them not scoring in this game at home as the host nation. And they just got three last game. They'll meet Canada, who was surprisingly behind early in their game against New Zealand. But drew level in first half stoppage time. A second goal from Evelyn Vines, who was a second half sub, gave Canada a 2-1 to lead, which they would hold on to and get the win. Canada dominated possession 61%. They outshot New Zealand 22-7 and had 9-2 in shots on target. Now, the win came without head coach Bev Priestman and other assistants, not also not on the sidelines, as they were sent home as part of Drone Gate for sending drones over the New Zealand practice facilities. The assistants responsible were at first just sent home. Priestman accepted a one-match absence and was expected to be back for this game. However, there's been more investigations against Canada that has uh, looked like they've been doing this in previous tournaments in previous years as well. And as such, Priestman has now been sent home and banned from the tournament as well. So Canada will be having their assistant coach on the sidelines coaching once again. Canada's only two losses in their last 14 games have come to USA. Both of those were in PKs. Canada scored in 14 straight with the recent scores of 2-1, to 2-1, 1-0, one, one, one uh, sorry, 1-1, one, 2-0, one, 2-2, two 1-1, two, two, one, one, and 2-2. Two, two. There's been a lot of both teams to score bets cashing as it's gone 6-1 and one in their last seven games. Between these teams, France won 2-1 in a 2023 friendly in the nation's most recent meeting. There's been a ton of low-scoring games, though, before that between these nations with five straight one nothing scores in the games prior, four of those five being won by France. Overall, France is 7-3-3 three three all-time versus Canada going back to 2006. I see at least a couple goals in this one and likely one from both again. Let's again go both teams to score here. France just gave up uh, two goals to Colombia. Canada just scored two goals. I think we'll see at least a goal from both here. Let's go both teams to score, plus 100 odds. 
So I've just gone through a straight bet, straight possible uh, single bet options for each game. Here are two parlay predictions as well. If you choose to play things a little bit safer, you could go Colombia to win and Spain to win, coming in at minus 134 in parlay number one. And a parlay number two, I just made both teams to score predictions between USA and Germany and France and Canada. While I do think we could see goals from both, the safer option could be just to ask for over 1.5 goals in both of those games. USA, Germany, over 1.5. France, Canada, over 1.5. Minus 131. Those are some two parlay options there as well to consider. That wraps up Sunday's Women's Olympic Soccer Match Day 2 predictions. What do you see happening on Sunday? Share your picks down there in the comments. Let's hope to all get some winners on Sunday.